Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning everyone. Good morning, sir. All. Uh, shall we start our class? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. fine. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, guys, I could see some WhatsApp messages, direct messages from you, you, you guys, regarding your doubts and all. Direct messages. Okay, please don't mind. Right now, I'm not in Pune. Today, I'm traveling back to Pune from Hyderabad. So, tomorrow, I'll respond to all your WhatsApp chats. Okay. Today we are going to start one topic that is IAM, okay, Identity and Access Management, IAM, okay. The full form is Identity and Access Management, you can see, Identity and Access Management. So by name itself, you would have understood by now, that is, this service deals with, you know, uh, permissions who can access, who cannot access. Okay, this deals with permissions. Okay, so let me explain what is this all about. In companies also, what we do, we create only one account only. In companies, there will be only one account. So here, this is my AWS account, okay. Company said, you know, uh, or, you know, AWS said will create that account with company's credit card. Okay. So we are going to log into the same account. We, every one of us, we log into the same company's account, but not as a root user, as a IAM user. You might have observed here earlier. Okay. If you try to log into AWS account, okay, here, apart from, you know, root user login here, you would have seen one more. Yeah, here you can see IAM user. So in companies, we are going to log into our AWS account as an IAM user. Okay. So here, user within the account that performs daily tasks. But here, root user means account owner that performs tasks requiring unrestricted access. So root user will have complete access, but users will have limited access. Okay. With limited permissions. Okay. That is so. So assume that I am a, I am owner. Okay, I log in, I create this account. This account belongs to Mr. Sai. Assume that in my company, there are three users are there. Okay, two users, let's take two users, A and B. Okay, so what I do, I create user accounts for both A and B. When I create user accounts, then they can log into this account. They can log in, but they can't do anything. They can just log in, they can't do anything. They can't do anything. Then what I do, I give easy to access to A. Okay, I give S3 access to B. Then A can log into my account. He can do anything with respect to EC2, but he can't even touch other section. B can do anything with respect to S3, but he can't even touch other services. In that also, we can use full access, read-only access. Read-only means he, can, he cannot create buckets, he cannot delete buckets, he cannot edit. You can just see what is the content inside the bucket. Just read only that kind of you know granular permissions we can give. Okay, so this IAM is all about creating users. Okay, giving permission. See, these are users, and we have given permissions for A. We have given EC2 permission for B. We have we have given SC. In the same manner, we can create groups also. For example, there are a group of people. Ten people are there. The ten people are there. Okay, 10 people like, you know, C, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Okay. 10 people are there. For every one of them, I want to give EC2 access. What do I do? I won't give EC2 access one by one. Instead, I'll create one group. I guess here, I'll create one group. Okay, then I'll give access to them. That is how we do it. Okay. I'll create, see, simple, what I do in this case, come into group, what actually we do. I'll create one group called EC2 access, EC2 group. I'll create one group called EC2 group. In that group, I'll add all these members. Okay, before that, before that, what I do, I create EC2 group. To this, I'll give EC2 full access permission. 
is to full access. See, earlier I was giving full access to individual user. But now what I'm doing, I'm giving that permission to group, easy to group. Which permission easy to full access? Then I'll add users to this group. When, as long as that user is in this group, he will get easy to full access. If he's not there in the group, he will have no access. Like that. So here what we are doing, we are learning how to create users, how to create groups, and how to give permissions. Permissions also can call policy. Policy. So these permissions we can give to users. We can assign to groups. See, here, this is a group, assigning permission to group. Here we can assign permissions to users also. Here you can see assigning users like that. So IAM is all about four things, users, groups, and their level of permissions. And also one major topic is there, that is roles. But before you understand roles, you must know one more topic, AWS command line interface. AWS command line interface. So these things anyways, we are going to see later on. But we are now first initially we are going to deal with these things. Users, groups and permissions. Okay, that is how it is going to work. Let me show you. So here, I am allows you to manage users. Manage means create, edit, delete. That's what we call management, right? Okay, manage users, groups and their level of access. That means permissions, what they can access, what user can access, what groups can access to AWS services. Means, okay, this user can access EC2 or not. Okay, whether this group can access S3 or not. So it allows you to manage users, groups, and their level of access to AWS services. Who can access what? Okay, that is what. Now, what are the advantages that we are getting in IAM? Okay, simple. Centralized control of your account. Centralized control means, see, you when you log into your AWS account as a root user, you will have complete access. Correct? I'm repeating. When you log into your AWS account as a root user, you will have complete access. You can do anything and everything. Correct? That is what we call centralized control. That means, see, you created AWS account means already you used IAM as simple as it. I'm repeating. You created AWS account means already you used IAM. Creating account also is a part of IAM only. Okay. So if it, it gives complete centralized control of your AWS account, complete full access. And also it gives shared access to your account. Okay. So I created my account. So I, that's how complete centralized access. If I create any user, if I give easy to access, that means what I'm doing. I'm sharing some of my access to this particular guy, UA, see, shared access to AWS account. That means I'm sharing some of my privileges. That means EC2 is, is the one, which I'm, this permission I'm giving to user A. So I'm sharing some of my access to other users. That's what shared access. And granular permissions we can give in that also, who can access up to which level, like EC2 full access, EC2 read-only access. Read-only means? They can read only, they can't delete it, okay, like that. And also we have multi-factor authentication. That means, uh, see, when you log into your AWS account, you have entered your username and password, correct? You entered your username and password. Apart from that, if you enable multi-factor authentication, okay, you will get one OTP that you have to enter. That's not OTP, I'll tell you, see. That's a multiple layer of layers of protection. So when you do any banking transaction, in which you are entering password, apart from that, you'll get OTP also. Why are you getting OTP? That is one more layer of protection, correct? Here also, if you enable multi-factor authentication, if you enable multi-factor authentication, then apart from entering username and password, you have to enter one OTP kind of thing. Okay, that's a multiple, one more layer of protection. So that even if your password gets, you know, compromised, still control is still in your hand because that OTP will come to your phone. That's what multi-factor authentication. And you can enable as a root user, you can force other users to enable. Okay, one more layer of protection. That also we are going to see. And this one allows you to set up your own password rotation policy. 
see you can allow users to change their passwords you can allow because you are creating user you are giving password to them you can allow users to change their own passwords okay in that you can enforce some parameters like uh, user you know he has to the password length should be must be 12 characters while changing he has to give one upper case one lower case one special character one numerical okay and uh, password should expire should get expired should be expired after every 30 days that's i know that's up to you how, what number you want to give and uh, only admin can reset the password user should not reset their password and you should not use last you know repeated passwords two to three something all those things you can set that's what password reset policy you can set so all these things you can do by using i am all these things got it so here user user means end user anyone who is a part of who wants to work in aws account he is a user tomorrow you are going to be a user in your company okay anyone who wants to use aws account that's a user. group means a collection of users under one set of permissions collection of users okay that means you know the group of people i am giving ec2 access so this is one group group means there should be something in common guys okay simply you know one guy is from aws one guy from devops one guy from python can i call them as a group no it doesn't make any sense over there right so there must be one unique thing one common thing should be there then only we can call as a group for example i can call you guys as a group because what i can say you you are aws group there is one common thing in you that is aws so that's what collection of users under one set of permission this is very very important Okay, then policy or you can call permissions. This is just a document that defines permissions. Who can access what? This we can apply to groups. As I already said, this we can apply to users also. Okay, yeah. Roles, as I said, I'm going to explain later. Roles and these remaining slides, because to understand that you must know AWS command line interface, right? Right. Now let me log into AWS account. So here I'm going to log in as a root user. Now enter your email ID. next oh what oh, oh, is it o2 wh that's it i logged into my aws account now go to i am go to services under management section uh, yeah security and identity yeah here you can see you'll get an option called i am right or else directly if you want to go to these services directly you click here here you type here i am that's it here directly it will show that service okay so that's up to you go to the service i am Okay, just give me one minute here. Oh, see, they have modified this console, guys. Earlier it was not there. They modified AWS console. You can see, introducing the new IAM dashboard. Okay, we have registered to make it easier. Do let me know. See, they have modified. So for the first time, I'm seeing this new console. That's like even if though if they change, see things will remain same. See, I'm I'm seeing this one for the first time. Okay. but by seeing all these things clearly if you observe carefully things will remain same if you if you know the things then even if they apply any if they do any changes further you need not to learn separately again by just have a you know careful observation you will get to know all those things okay here it is showing see how many groups are there we don't have any groups we have one user some roles and policies are there okay don't worry just let me delete all these things Now, because these are related to my previous lessons, so let me delete so that you know. I'll explain from the scratch. Just one minute. Let me delete all this.
fine. So here you can see we don't have any users. We don't have any groups. Both are zero. Roles will be there. Few roles will be there. These are default rules. And some permissions also will be there. Those are default things. In fact, in your account also, you can find all these things. Okay. So you need not worry just by seeing this number. Don't worry. Now here, so few things you must understand here. First one, you can see it, my account name, Sai W second. Yeah. Here you go to security credentials. Click that security credentials. Okay. Now here you will come to this particular section. So your security credentials. These are the part of IAM only. Here you can see. Identity and access management only. Now here we need to do small, small, not changes, just you should know all these things. The first one, password. If you want to change your account password, you can change from here. Just click here. Click here to change password, name, email ID that is associated with AWS. But by just by clicking here, you can change. Now, what is this multi-factor authentication? Just let me minimize it. Yeah. Multi-factor authentication, MFA. You might have observed here in if you go to dashboard. Okay, the same thing, the warning here, it is showing that add MFA for root user. It is showing a warning that, hey, please enable. Okay, for, otherwise it is going to be a security concern, right? Now, yeah, let me go back to the security credentials. So what is this MFA all about? I'll tell you, if you want to enable MFA, first go to here, click here, activate MFA. You can see virtual MFA device, right? Just select, keep that one selected, continue. And yeah, here, when I click here, show QR code. As and when I click here, it shows one QR code. Click here. You can see, it's showing one QR code. If you don't want to see, just close it. Now, what is this QR code? Simple. You need to download one application in your mobile. Uh, that is either um, Microsoft Authenticator or Google Authenticator. Let me show you. You need to go to your mobile Play Store. If it is uh, Android, you go to Play Store. If it is iPhone, go to Apple Store. Here, in that Play Store, you need to download these applications. Google Authenticator. Google Authenticator. You have to download this application. Now, when you download this application, if you open that application, uh, it will be something like this. Let me just show you. Yeah, here. That is going to be something like this. If you open Google Authenticator, you won't find any of these things. Just you'll get one option called plus. You just click on plus. When you click on plus, it will allow you to scan something, scan the QR code. That time, what do you do? You scan your QR code here. By just click here, show QR code. You scan your QR code. Okay. If you scan, what actually happens? The moment you scan, immediately, immediately here it, it shows, immediately it shows one uh, password here, something like this. You can see here, immediately after scanning only, the, it shows one password and this, uh, this one. And this is valid for only for 30 seconds. This is a timer, what you can see here in a blue color. This is valid for 30 seconds. After every 30 seconds, the password will be changed. This uh, ID will be different okay, every 30 seconds. That will be modified. Now, what do you have to do? Now you are getting right 180869 and something. Okay, that you have to enter here in first MFA code. Then after 30 seconds here, after 30 seconds, it will in place of this only it will show one more password like 23142 something. Okay, the second consecutive password. That second consecutive one, immediate one that you have to enter here. See here, type two consecutive MFA codes, consecutive. Okay, so that should be, you know, it uh, should be consecutive immediately. It's not like, see, now you are entering this one. After 30 seconds, you are you are getting this one. After 30 seconds, you are getting something 0, 2, 1, 3, 1. You are entering the first one and third one. No, that is not, that it won't allow. Two consecutive, either these two or these two. Two consecutive passwords you have to enter here, first and second. Then click here SNMB. That's it. So whatever password that you got in your mobile, those you enter here and click here SNMB. That's it. 
You assigned an MFA, that's it over you. That means you enabled MFA. Now onwards, what actually happens? Now onwards, if you want to log into your AWS account, see here, let me log out. When you try to log into your AWS account, anyways, you have to enter your username, password. See, you will enter username like this. And yeah, anyways, CAPTCHA is one more layer of security. Z6. You enter password. It's B. Oh, here you enter password after entering password after click on signing it will it will ask you to enter that otp okay it will ask to enter otp that that time what do you need to do you need to open your mobile that time whatever password it shows that time that particular time okay so whatever it shows right that you have to enter in otp if it asks it definitely lost okay you have to enter so after 30 seconds it will show one more password so if you are entering that time that you have to enter that particular otp that means at that time whatever you can see that only you have to enter then only it will accept Okay, either you can use Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator, many authenticators are there. That is up to you which one that you use. In companies, yes, we are using these things. Yes, uh, how many of you are using these things in your companies? Anyone? Yes, 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 sir. Me. Using, right? Uh, yeah. We are using uh, Microsoft Authenticator. Yeah, yeah, right. So we have many authenticators are there. So that is how you can do it. By using these authenticators, you can enable one more layer of protection. But make sure. If you want to log into your account, make sure your phone should be with you. Otherwise, how can you get OTP? So if you forget your phone, then you can't log into your account. That's it. Okay, be careful. That is how you enable MFA, multi-factor authentication. Then come into next one. That is access keys. You can see it. Access keys. Create new access keys. And what they're showing here in bracket? Access key ID, secret key ID. So what is this all about? Let's try to understand. See, whatever we have, so far we have been dealing with our AWS account graphically, correct? We have created uh, uh, EC2 instances. We have launched S3 buckets, load balancers, auto scaling, everything we have done graphically, correct? So see here, we logged into our AWS account by entering email, that's what username and password, right? Graphically, graphic, give a graphical user interface. Okay, so we entered username and password, then we entered into our account, then we did everything graphically. That's why whatever even you can see, this is all about graphical, right? You can see colors, all these things. So there is one more way through which, there is one more way through which you can access your AWS account. That is through command line. Command line interface. Okay. Through command line. See, suppose you take your laptop, Windows laptop. If I see, if I go to command prompt, see where I'm now, I'm under C drive users and DC. Correct? C drive users and DC. And the same thing. What, now I can type some commands in C drive. Just give me one minute. Yes. Yeah, here you can see I can go to CD users and A, sir. Right? Let me keep these two side by side. Yeah. Now, whatever I can do through command line, everything I can do graphically, whatever I can do through graphical, everything I can do through command line. Like, let me show you. If you want to create any directory here, okay, right click new. Okay. Here I'm giving a name called so this eighth month, right? August, right? Eight AWS one, correct? Enter. I created one folder called eight AWS one. The same thing if I want to do through command line, simple. We need to type one command mkdr eight AWS two. Enter. As and when I press enter, 
under 8 aws one folder you can see one more folder yes you can see 8 aws2 correct if you want to see all these list in command line yeah type one command just dir enter you can see here 8 aws1 and 8 aws2 right? that means whatever you can do through cli everything you can do through gy whatever you can do through gy everything you can do through cli so you have two choices whether you go with this command line or graphical in aws account also here also so far we have been dealing everything graphically but everything you can do through command line also just you know to launch ec2 instance you need to run one command to create s3 bucket you need to type one command to create load balancer you need to type one command so that we can do in that way so for that you need if you want to manage your aws account through command line you have to enter access key secret key You have to enter access key and secret keys. Okay. Same thing as if you want to log in through GUI, you have to enter username and password. If you want to log in through CLA, you have to enter access key and secret key. That's it. Okay. So this username is like access key, password is like secret key. Make sure one more thing very, very important. That is, if you want to manage your AWS. Through GUI, you can't use access key and secret keys. If you want to manage your AWS account through CLI, you cannot use username and password. CLI means access key, secret key. GUI means username and password. The full name of these keys are access key ID, secret access key. Full names are access key ID, secret access key. These are the full names. Those you can see here. Access key ID, secret access key. In a shortcut, you know, name that we use access key, secret key. So uh, you need to generate these keys. Okay, if you want to manage through CLI, we need to generate these keys. Okay, those those we are going to generate from here. You can see create new keys. Okay, if you click here, those keys will be generated. Just remember that. Okay. So these I am going to explain when I talk about uh, this AWS command line interface. Before uh, before I am roles, we are going to see AWS command line. That time I am going to explain these things. Access key and secret key. Fine. Now go to dashboard. See here now we need to learn. If you enable MFA, you won't find this warning anymore here. Okay. Since we did not key, create any keys, access key, secret key, that's why it is showing. Root user doesn't have any uh, keys, any active keys, access key and secret key. So what we do here, first we, we should know how to create users, how to create groups and all those things, right? Okay. I'm going to create two users. You can give any, I'll give one, one is Hari, and one is Raj. I'll create two users. So when I create two users, that means they can log into my AWS account, correct? They can log in, but they can't do anything. They can just log in. They can't do anything. Then what I do, I'll create two groups. One group, one more group. So to these groups, I'll give names like, you know, EC2 group. Guys, why I'm taking only these two names, EC2 and S3? Because you know only these two services only, right? Till by now. Okay, that's all. S3 group. Okay, I'll give EC2 group names, I'll give S3 group. Okay, you can give any name. Now what I'll do, to EC2 group, I'm going to assign one permission. Okay, I'm going to attach one permission that is EC2 full access. EC2 full access. This is permission. To S3, I'll give one more permission that is S3, S3 full access. Okay, these are permissions. See, now I'm attaching these permissions to groups. Okay, EC2 full access, S3 full access, these are permissions. Now what I do, I place Hari user inside EC2 group. I place Hari user in EC2. 
then by default hari will get ec2 full access by default okay as long as he is a part of ec2 group hari will have ec2 full access that means hari is inheriting the permission from the group since group is having that permission and since he is a part of the group that's why he is getting this permission suppose if i remove hari from the group then he doesn't have any permission he won't have any permissions understood that's why since he is a part of the group that's why he is getting that group related permissions you know what i'll do i'll keep this raj user in s3 group raj user in s3 so raj user will have s3 full access now okay s3 full access okay so by now we understood you know how to assign permissions to groups now what i'll do here i'll attach one permission to raj directly to raj i'm going to attach one permission that is let us one permission uh, yeah we have one more permission glacier glacier flags i'll attach one more permission to raj glacier flexes okay see red color permissions that we attach to group but blue color permission blue color that we attach to individual user now what is happening here with raj raj is having two permissions one is s3 full access and the one is glacier full access guys don't worry what is glacier and all that that's actually part of s3 only but glacier they are giving as a separate service also directly so that if you want to store any data that you can wait if you want to retrieve that data that you can upload in glacier actually that already we included in s3 life cycle management okay you know right glacier glacier deep archive if you want if you want to retrieve data you need to wait for some couple of hours that is the purpose of glacier it's a just a storage same like s3 but you waiting you need to retrieve you know to retrieve you need to wait that they are giving as a separate service directly okay fine now raj is having two permissions one is s3 full access and one is glacier full access but s3 permissions he is getting from the group but glacier full access directly we attach it to him directly okay that means as long as he is part of that group s3 group okay he will get s3 permissions glacier full permission both but the moment if i remove this user from the group then s raj will have only glacier permissions he will not have s3 permissions because he is getting s3 access only just because he is in the group got it that's that means here we are learning how to create users how to create groups how to place users from the groups and how to remove user from the group that also i will show you and how to attach permissions to groups and how to attach permissions directly to the users okay all those things we are going to see okay all those things okay guys yes, you understood here theory part everyone please uh, let me know you understood till here uh, yes sir yes sir Okay. Sai, when we are giving the S3 pa, in the group from the remove Raj means how can he get the glaciers for me? See, irrespective of his presence in the group, he will continue to have glacier access because we attach this one to Raj directly, right? Not by a group. Okay, okay. Simple. If I remove Raj from the group now, Raj will not have S3 access, but Raj will continue to have glacier access. He could be anywhere. He will continue to have glacier access because we attach this one directly. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Any doubt still here? Anyone? Ah, uh, roles are not similar to groups itself, right? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Roles, you know, you should not compare because roles are different. That's a completely different. That I'm going to explain after completion of this user groups and permissions. After showing practicals of all these things, then I'll show you. I'll tell you what is this roles all about. Okay. Okay. any notes still here because see practical even though time is there still uh, that practical session it takes good amount of time okay so that i can't break if i break you can't uh, remember that one that's why i'd like to show this one in entire one class that is tomorrow yeah if you have any doubts you can ask me now any doubts from anyone no 
everyone you understood everyone yes sir okay yes yes sir so that's it for today uh, see you all in uh, tomorrow's class okay same time okay tomorrow we are going to see practical sessions practical things got it yeah. thank you okay, thank sir. you thank you all thank you. bye thank you sir bye have a nice day thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you